Hello, everybody. This is International Master Brian Smith with ChessLecture.com, bringing to you an online instructional video. Um, it seems that I got a lot of feedback from my last video on Endgame, so I decided to do another one. In this one, I'll be showing some instructive mistakes um, some people made, including me, in the Endgame. Uh, but first of all, I wanted to sort of clarify what I said in my last video about defense in Rook and Pawn endings about the passive active defense. And it was a little dangerous wording to use because um, the, the, the thing is, with the rook and pawn endings, of course, the activity of your pieces is crucial, even more important than material. So what I meant by passive is not to put your pieces in a passive position, of course, but simply that when you're defending in many positions, you don't have to have any real plan of your own. You simply have to prevent your opponent's winning tries. So just as an example, I was wanted to show this very basic basic drawn position, the Philidor position, which is very well known. Um, and of course, white has an extra pawn here. Black puts his rook on the third rank, or is his third rank, and simply prevents white's king from moving forward, because white's main dangerous try here is if he could get his king forward uh, and threaten checkmate and force Black's king to move away. So he Black simply leaves his rook on the third rank in an active position, of course, on the, as far away as possible, so he has as much checks as he wants. But he doesn't have any plan to just achieve a draw immediately. He simply prevents White's only winning attempt. And here, of course, White can't do much except for push the pawn, and then once the pawn gets pushed, of course, Black comes down and then starts checking and gives perpetual check. So this is an example of what I mean by the passive active defense. You don't put your pieces in passive positions, of course. The activity of your pieces is crucial, but simply that when you're defending, often you don't have to be going straight for the draw. You just prevent your opponent's winning attempts. So that's what I meant by that. Okay, moving on. Uh, I'm going to show some end games where some people made some instructive mistakes. Um, so first example is the game Borisenko versus Vorikina. So this was the game Borisenko versus Zvorikina. Um, and here White definitely has a big advantage. Um, she, I think it's she could simply play uh, Queen E1, for instance, and win Black's E-pawn and probably win the game. Um, but rather than doing that, she decided to win a pawn immediately. But and it leads to king and pawn ending, but uh, you can't ever just write off a king and pawn ending. You have to look at it more carefully if you're going to go into it. There's lots of tricks. Um, so she took on e5, so undermining the support of the knight. Black, of course, had to take. And queen takes f4, and most likely she didn't consider the possibility of black trading queens, uh, which would seem, you know, king and pawn ending with an extra outside pawn, but this is actually what black did. Uh, she took on f4, the king took back, and now I'll give you a moment to try to find black's move here. What should she do? Okay, the thing that white missed, or just fa failed to look consider, is a4. The point is black is now going to create a pass pawn, so this must have been a rude surprise. Um, and white can't stop it. She played king e4, trying to get over. Black's just going to play b4. Notice that b4 immediately was wrong because of a4, and white wins. So this is a typical thing. Uh, king e4, trying to get the king over. Now, of course, b4, and white can't take that pawn because black will simply queen her pawn. So after b4, white took on d4, black took on c3, white played king c3, and now she's stopped the pawns. If a2, then king b2, and white wins. But unfortunately, she's in Zugzwang after king g5. Uh, the king can't move anywhere because then a2 and black will queen. Uh, white actually wishes she didn't have the c-pawn, of course. Otherwise, then king c2, king b1, and everything would work out. But here, she's in Zugzwang, had to play d4, king takes g4, and resign since black's king catches the pawn. And white then will be in Zugzwang, and black will queen the pawn. So it's important, you know, especially when you're going into a king and pawn inning, to look very carefully uh, you may not consider the possibility that your opponent will trade queens when 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 he's down a pawn, but uh, you have to king and pawn endings have lots of tricks. So this was a pretty typical mistake. Now next example is quite famous. 
So the next example was a very famous, uh, famous example. Um, this was the game Alexander Alyokhin versus Yefim Bogolubov uh, from the World Championship match in 1929. And here it's pretty simple. Each side has one pawn. White is more advanced, so he's going to win Black's rook first. And it's going to be rook versus pawn. This is pretty easy to understand. Um, black has so obviously black has to start pushing his pawn as soon as possible, and he only only problem he has is where to put his king first of all. So um, here he made a really amazing mistake for this level of player. He played the move king g4, and what ended up happening was white white played b7, black played f5. White queened his pawn. Um, black took. White took. And now f4. King d5. f3. King e4. f2. Rook f8. Stopping the pawn. King g3. King e3. And black loses the pawn, and, and so he resigned. So, of course, we can see a very... If we just look, go back... If black's king were on e4, white's king would not be able to approach as fast. So it's real important, of course, to foresee what's going to happen. White's going to win black's rook, and we need to have the king to shoulder white's king away. This is a very well-known concept. So he should have played king e4. And this this one would lead to a draw after um, b7, f5, white queens the pawn, Black takes it, white takes, and now um, simply f4, king c5, f3, and there's not much white can do to try to win. Rook, f, rook f8, if he plays rook e8, black can simply play king d3, and it doesn't help white. Rook f8, black plays king e3, and notice white, white's king has been slowed down down. King c4, f2, and white doesn't get there in time. For example, king c3, king e2. And if white checks, then king d1. And he has to go back, and king e2, and it's a draw. So, so foreseeing what the, the future event, events which were going to happen, that's real important, of course. Now, king e5 didn't work, e, didn't, didn't draw either, it looks like. After king e5, White plays b7. So this was the main problem, was to decide between king e5 and king e4. Uh, king e4 is definitely better, um, but king g4 is really incomprehensible. So b7, f5, this one probably, this one wouldn't draw. Queen's the pawn, black takes, rook takes, um, f4, for instance, king c5, and now the difference is that after f3, uh, white has a check, or r rather, white can white can simply uh, um, simply come closer with king c4. Black can't push the pawn yet. King e4, king c3, um, and king e3, and then give a check. And black's king is forced in front of the pawn, or you know, behind it, whatever. But white's king gets to come over. And then, for example, f2 check, and king e2, and white wins. So. This is kind of a surprising mistake, but it's important to be, you know, to, to be looking ahead at what kind of what kind of features are in the position, what what the what the battle is going to be about. And here, Black, of course, needed to see that it was going to be rook versus pawn, and that his, he needed to prevent White's king from coming over. Okay, the next example is from one of my games. Uh, this is my game from last weekend in a uh, tournament in Baltimore. My opponent is international master Inkbot Tegsushorin. And, uh, of course, this isn't an end game, uh, but we reach one in a few moves, and I just thought it was relevant to see the, what happened before for the psychological reasons. There are a lot of psychological reasons behind me messing up this end game. So it's, it's white's move here. Black has just played king g8 to h8, threatening my queen. And here I made the move bishop takes e6. I'd been fixated on this idea of sacrificing my queen. Um, and I, which I'd seen a few moves before, and it does give white a big advantage, but uh, much simpler was simply queen h4. Um, continuing to threaten black's rook, and if black plays 
rook to d6, I'll just take on e5, and white's winning easily here. Um, if black sacrifices the exchange, white, he gets not enough compensation, plus white still has the attack. Uh, if he if he moves his rook, then he's also losing there. So this was much simpler. Um, in fact, he has no squares to move it to. Um, so, but anyway, well, maybe he has, okay, but uh, this was much simpler. But I decided to play bishop takes e6. And now, of course, he has to take the queen, otherwise he's just down the exchange. I check on g7, king g8 is the only move, check on e5, king f8, bishop takes d7, rook d8, bishop f5, threatening his knight. And now he should have probably tried f6. It's equal material. I figured, you know, his king is kind of stuck, and I have two powerful bishops. It probably gives white a big advantage, but um, it's not as clear as the other other variation. Here he played knight f6, and I played rook e1, and now he should have tried rook to e8, preventing what I do now, although white has some advantage. Queen c6 is what he played, which was a mistake. Now I can take on f6. Queen takes f6 and bishop h7, threatening rook g8 mate. And there's no way for black to avoid that except to play queen h8. And now I checked on g8. He took. I took back. He took. And now, interesting thing is, this is now move 40. So um, I, ha I had about two minutes to make my last move. And the psychological thing that's going on here is pretty clear. I mean, before this, it was a complicated middle game. I had a big attack. Um, things got a little messy. And then suddenly we simplify down to this end game where, first of all, I can't lose. I got one more move to make before I get another hour on the clock and then just peacefully win the end game. And uh, I'm up a pawn, a past pawn. He has weak age pawn and everything. But I had to make a decision, and I didn't have a lot of time. So on the one hand, I was sort of relaxed. I probably relaxed a little bit. Uh, on the other hand, you know, and a little bit careless, too. So here... I made a mistake, which it turned out should still I should still be winning after it because the position is very won here. Um, but I'll show you my thinking. I played rook e5, which is a mistake. Of course, I saw he's going to play rook to c8. Okay, his next move is clearly rook to c8. So first, I was thinking rook e5, rook c8, and rook c5, and see if this if it's possible to just win the king and pawn ending. In which case, I just win by force. So that would be nice, and I quickly calculated the variation where he takes. Of course, he has to play king f8, and now I can't get up to guard my c-pawn, so I go after his h-pawn instead. King h2, king e7, king h3, king d7, king h4, king c6, takes on h5, takes on c5. Now I start pushing my pawns. f4, king c4, g4, takes c3, uh, g5, a5, f5, b4, takes, takes g6, takes, takes, b3, g7, b2, g8, b1, and draw. So, of course, that's a really long calculation, but you can easily do that, you know, in a short time, because it's all simple moves, just counting. Um, so that was a little disappointing, but I still had hope that maybe there would be some subtlety in that endgame that I would be able to find and maybe... Maybe I would be able to find a win by force after the time control. Still, that's not a reason to play rook e5. Then I looked at rook e3, and I saw he has rook c8, rook c4, rook a4, and taking my pawn. So this was annoying. Um, I hadn't yet noticed that after he goes rook a4, I'll be able to push my d-pawn and actually queen by force. Uh, but that was a little bit annoying. And then I glimpsed at the variation rook e5, rook c8, rook takes h5, rook takes c3, rook h3, followed by rook to d3 getting behind the pawn, which should be a win. Um, and so I played rook e5 at the point when I just had to make a move. Then after the time control, of course, he played rook c8, I suddenly realized that first of all, rook takes h5, rook takes c3, rook h3, besides the fact that he can check on c1 and get behind the pawn with rook d1, which should be a draw, but he can even better take on h3, g takes, a5, king f1, b4, takes a4, and black wins. So this is kind of sim similar to that Sorkina example. So of course I didn't play that. Um, so after rook e5, rook c8, um, I also looked at rook c5 again and couldn't find anything in the king and pawn ending, which there isn't anything. 
Um, and eventually I played the move rook e3. So now going back a move, if I had more time here, I could find the simplest win. The main problem I have is this rook c8, rook c4, rook a4 thing. So the move a4 would simply um, end the game. Uh, if black plays, I mean, I'm not even sure a4 is the best move because rook e3 is easily winning as well. Uh, if black takes on a4, I go rook a1, rook c8, rook a3, and simply bring my king to d3 and win easily with two connected pass pawns. If he plays rook c8 immediately, I take on b5. He takes back, then rook e3, and again bring the king to d3, and in view of black's weak pawns on b5 and h5, and uh, you know his king is cut off and my d-pawn is passed, I win easily. And so only try is probably uh, after rook e3, maybe rook c4, king f1, b4, takes, rook takes, and then rook to d3. And this should be a win for white as well. Um, maybe it wouldn't be a win if black's rook is, pawn is on g6. Maybe he would have at least some chances. I'm not sure. That's probably still a win. But with a weak pawn on h5, white's certainly winning here. So that was one way to win. Um, and initially I thought, this was my mistake and then I had to play a4, but really rook e3 is definitely going to be enough to win. I'm simply up a tempo on what happened in the game, which I should have won anyway. Then the king comes to d3 and it's it's a win. Um, he, so I played rook e5, he played rook c8, and I did play the right move. I played rook e3, admitting to losing a tempo. And now he played rook c4. And now what's going on here? So. At the point when he plays rook a4, I have to play d5. Um, but I don't have to play it yet. If I play d5 too early, he's going to be able to play rook c5, attacking the pawn. I'll have to protect it, and then his king can come over, and then my d-pawn is weak, and I'll lose it. So what I did now, I made another inaccuracy. And I can say that um, a big part of managing to blow this totally one end game is um, has to do with psychological reasons. Uh, I made this mistake, rook e5, lost to tempo, and then I had a bad attitude afterwards. So here I played king h2, which I think is still winning, but much simpler was just king f1. And um, after king f1, um, now if he goes after my a pawn, I, I I should win rook a4, d5, rook takes a3, then, uh, well, d6 is d6 is good enough. And so if check, king f2, and uh, check, king d3, rook a1, and then there's king d4. And after rook d1, check, for example, king c5, and I simply support my pawn and win that way. So... So there's there's no real chance for black here. I'm pushing my pawn and win his rook, and his a pawn isn't fast enough. So so this is so of course king f1 was and just bringing the king to d3 and then pushing the d pawn is a very simple way to win. King f1, if he if actually if he plays king f8 for, for instance, king e2 and uh, rook a4 again d5 is the same thing. And my king simply comes up to d3, supports the pawn, and I just advance it and win. Uh, so he can't take on a3 because I queen the pawn. So that was simple. But somehow I missed something there. I played king h2, planning to just go after his h pawn, seeing that still rook a4 is not good because d5 takes on a3, d6, and now he can't stop the pawn. For example, rook a1, d7, rook d1, I have a check on e8 and then queening the pawn. Still winning after king h2. So here he played king f8, trying to get his king closer. He would like to get it off the back rank, but it doesn't. But, you know, after king g7, for instance, um, then his king is just further away as well. So it may be a possibility, actually. But he played king f8, and now I played king h3, which is the correct move. I'm just bringing my king up. I'm going to take his h pawn. And he played a5, and now... I made a move that I can't even comprehend. Um, of course, I did not want to play d5 until he plays rook a4, because then he gets back after d5, my d-pawn becomes weak and can't be supported. But for some reason, 
I don't know why I thought I had to play d5 here, but there's absolutely no reason why it would be forced, especially after a5. Um, so this is really a mystery to me. I think that's probably a combination of tiredness and um, wrong attitude because I felt like I had already messed up the end game. Here I could simply play g3, which was my intention anyway. Of course, I can't go get his pawn because after king h4, he plays b4. I think this was where I made the mistake. I, I was planning, of course, to get the pawn. And uh, you know, now after b4, he's going to take d4 with check. So then it would be a draw. It would be two against one. So I played g if I played g3, though, with a plan of f4 and king h4, which I actually had in mind as well, but for some reason I thought d5 was forced, which is really strange to me. Um, so after g3, he's basically in Zugzwang. Uh, b4 doesn't lead to any draw because I just, I just trade, or maybe take the other way so that there's no a4, although that's probably nothing. Takes on take there, takes, takes, takes on b4 and rook d3 in that same endgame with uh, pass d pawn and black has the weak h pawn. He's going to lose his h pawn, so I don't think that there's any chance here for black. Uh, so b4 doesn't work. Um, rook a4, again I play d5, rook takes a3, d6, and he doesn't get back in time, again because I have a check on e8. For example, rook a2, d7, rook d2, rook e8, followed by d8. So, king, I mean, so d5, of course, breaks a very, pop, you know, a very well-known rule in the endgame, and you don't hurry. Before you make any changes in the structure, you need to first make all possible improvements in your position. And the fact is, g3 simply puts back black pretty much in Zugzwang. Uh, I guess the only plan he would have is, t of course, he has to keep his rook on c4, or else he has no more counterplay at all. I guess the only plan he would have is something like bringing the king up to f6. But, uh, you know, this ultimately hopeless, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win the h-pawn, and um, there's, you know, he once his king is on f6, he still will, you know, when I have any threats, his king will just be just as far away. So, um, so simply g3, and I guess king g7, f4, king f6, and um, I guess white should probably win this. I, I think king h4, okay, he has rook a4 then, and then he's going to gain a couple, couple tempos because he'll threaten mate on h1, and plus his king is not where it can be checked. So maybe after king f6, maybe now I have to play d5, but this is a huge difference. I've gained a lot of time. Um, so after d5, he would have to play rook c5, uh, rook to d3, king e7, uh, king h4, king d6, king takes h5, and it's simply over. Uh, if black trades, then white's going to queen first because I've also advanced my pawns in the meantime. So I, I, I think so, at least. After f5, there's no f6 because white plays king g6 and g5, for instance, or just takes the pawn, rather, whether, depending on where black goes. King d3, g5, takes, g6, takes, takes, b4, takes, takes, g7, b3, g8, b2, and it's a knight pawn, so white wins. So, but in any case, g5 is, even if that led to a draw, the, the move d5 makes no, no sense because g3 would put black in a situation where he has to lose a couple tempos, and there's no reason not to do that. Um, so, so after d5, now it's a draw, but, you know, going back to my other video, we can see how well he defended. He, p he defended pretty well after, after d5, all my attempts to win. Uh, so he played rook c5, which forces my rook behind the pawn, which is where I want it in general, but it allows his king to approach. So rook e5 doesn't work because he can just take on c3. So rook to d3, now he played rook to c4, which he didn't really need to do. He wanted to stop my king from coming up, but I don't think he needed to do that. Maybe he did, actually. I'm not, uh, yeah, actually, probably he, he had to. So rook c4, um, d6 I played. Uh, it doesn't cost me any time, and his king will take the pawn further back, so I figured this is okay. King e8, and now I played g3. So this is what I had in mind anyway, but 
Um, for some reason, I felt that I had to play d5. I felt it was a forced move for some reason, that he was threatening something. Uh, so after g3, he played king d7. I played f4. So I'm, my plan is, of course, to take his h-pawn. Now he has to act, but he's got my d-pawn under control, so he can go get the a-pawn. And now if I don't want to lose, I better take his pawns, and we trade a whole bunch of pawns. So I played rook to d5. Otherwise, he just takes on a3 and threatening b4. Probably he wins. So uh, rook to d5. He took on a3. I took on b5. Now he could play a4. Probably wouldn't make a difference. But rook takes c3. Rook takes a5. King takes d6. At some point also, I had hallucinated that at this point, I'd, I have rook e5 and that his h-pawn has already been taken. But really, it hasn't been taken. Rook e5 would cut his king off. And if, Black's king do, if black didn't have the h-pawn, um, probably white wins then, I think, with black's king cut off. It should be probably a win. However, um, in this case, I have no way to take his h-pawn with my king. He simply leaves his rook on the third rank. So, you know, just he just plays rook a3, king h4, rook b3. And th I can't take the pawn with my king, so I have to take it with the rook, and then he brings his king over and gets the same position as in the game. So after king takes d6, I take h5. Now, of course, he plays king e6. Otherwise, I would get to play rook e5. And now we have two against one, and some people have lost this end game. So I played on, although it's a pretty simple draw, and we'll see how he uses... Um, the defensive method I was talking about. So here I played king to g4, and he played um, king to f6, so again getting the king closer. I played rook a5, king g6, I checked on a6, he plays f6, and I played now rook a7. There's a nice stalemate trick here. If I try f5, he plays king g7, and now, you know, with my g-pawn backward, the only chance to win is to win his f-pawn. Check on a7, king h6, rook f7, and um, uh, actually, actually, I, I would probably try king h4 first. It doesn't really make a difference, I think, planning to play rook f7 next, and now he has rook c4. And if g4, he just takes g4. And after king takes, it's stalemate. Uh, however, he doesn't even need to resort to that because rook, um, rook to c6, for example, uh, is also a fortress. So, so that didn't work. I tried rook a7, and now, of course, he can just wait with rook b3. But he went for a drawing formation that he also knew, f5. So king h4, and he played rook c6. So he got this type of fortress. So I have no checks to chase his king back. If I could get my king to g5, I would probably win in a lot of cases. Um, but I can't, you know, find, there's no way to chase his king back. He just waits on the third rank. So now I tried rook a8 to try to check him from behind and get my king to g5 that way. Uh, another way to try to, you know, try to get practical chances would be to play something like rook to a2, bring my king around to f3, and try to do that type of stuff. And I'll just show you what might happen. Black would still wait. King h3, um, wait, King rook c6, king g2, rook b6. No, no need to take any action here for black yet. Um, rook a3 to get my king up to f3 without getting checked. Rook c6, king f3, rook b6. Again, he doesn't have to do anything yet. King e3, now okay, king f6, let's say. So his king just steps to slightly better square. Um, king d4, and now, of course, lots of moves are possible, but rook e6 would be good, cutting the king off. King d5, and now just rook e1. And the king is cut off this way. Rook a6, check, king f7. And I can't see any way for white to play for a win. Black just moves his rook back and forth on e1, e2, maybe e3. And if white checks on a7, black goes back to f6. Um, if he plays some sort of waiting move, like rook to a3, um, then um, 
black could, of course, play many moves, but now he can just play king f6, of course. After rook, after rook a3, there's always, you know, and then now he can start giving checks if white does nothing. So, so it's just, it's simple draw this way, too. So notice that black doesn't have to try to undertake anything now. So what happened, I played rook to a8, and he played rook to b6, just waiting. Rook to g8 check, king f7. Rook to g5, king f6. And there's still no way for me to get my king in. I tried king h5, trying to check on g6, and then play king g5, and he played accurate move rook b3. Um, so now I can't do anything. If I check on g6, I can't go king g5 because g3 is hanging. So basically what happened is kind of repeated some moves. I guess I did something like rook to g8, and he he just played rook a3. Um, something like that. And after a little bit, we you know check again. We agreed to draw. I think I played king h6 at some point and he just waits. There's nothing white can do. I mean, of course, I could go back and retreat my king back around and try to play like I was like before, bringing my king out to the queen side, but I figured it was already time to allow myself a break before the next game. So why did I manage to screw this up? Well, I think a big part was uh, psychological factors. First of all, the last move of the time control, I played a nice game up to that point. Okay, uh, the queen sacrifice wasn't really right, but up to that point it was, it was I had played well, and then I made this mistake, which is still winning, but somehow I had a wrong attitude, um, and this led to some sort of hallucinations. So I uh, hope you've learned from some of these typical mistakes that people have made in the end game, and have a good day.